go sapo logama suku go kupelela kwa yo law including those that were unable to make it here to president mbeki upakati kwetu ambassador o minister uba bomthetwa no mama uma zibuko o mc wetu lapha kule province delegates from zimbabwe the legions abe pundisi umfundisi waqu o mongameli wami kula segethe yase johannesburg north and to the beautiful choir from epethesta and if you want to hear them every sunday you can come there it is my humble privilege to stand here today to to bring words of comfort to the family. I would like to sing a song and bring us back to church, and then I will say a few words. Please lead us with Undo Kokel.
Exodus. I read the 15th chapter, and I take from there just a few verses. Verses 19 through to 21. When the horses of Pharaoh with his chariots and his chariot drivers went into the sea, the Lord brought back the waters of the sea upon them. But the Israelites walked through the sea on dry ground. Then the prophet Miriam, Aaron's sister, took a tambourine in her hand, and all the women went out after her with tambourines and with dancing. And Miriam sang to them, Sing to the Lord, for he has triumphantly and graciously conquered. Horse and rider he has thrown into the sea. This is the word of God, and thanks be to God. Let us pray. Lord, turn our thoughts into prayers. Turn our prayers into love. Turn our love into a life of humble obedience to your call. Make us the people you've purposed us to be. In the name of Christ and for his sake, amen. When I wondered what to read to comfort the family this morning, I, I found myself caught up in a number of quandaries. I could have easily gone for the easy funeral named texts of sorts. There are funeral texts that preachers have two funeral texts. I don't know of a funeral text in the Bible, though. But listening to the story and the magnitude of who Mom Dorothy is, and hearing the echoes of her life in terms of a musical career and what it meant for the time that she was born in, I couldn't help myself but go to the book of Exodus. Because the book of Exodus is that book that tells of the story of the people of God. The book of Exodus shows up, and what Exodus means shows up a number of times throughout the Old Testament. It shows up in the New Testament a, thousand ta a number of times as well. But may I dare suggest this morning that Exodus is a story of every person and every generation that seeks to find what it means to live as a free people. It is a story of people trying to find the words and name their experience. May I suggest that Exodus happens every time people think of justice and wonder how justice looks like for our generation and for our time. May I therefore further suggest that Exodus is a book that gets written and rewritten every time the people of God seek to find a, a, a comfort to their dreams and find a connection between their dreams and their futures. May I suggest further that the book of Exodus shows up in every newspaper every morning. May I suggest that as you go out of this place, would you dare to go and read the book of Exodus in the newspapers of this Sunday? Because in every time, in every generation, in every newspaper article, look out for who is the pharaoh and who is the slave, and who has access and who doesn't have access. Look out for the places where pharaoh shows up and the empire shows up and the emperor shows up in every generation. 
Bandwana Bagaba Mumasuku, I want to say thank you for giving us Uma Mumasuku. She was one of those that wrote verses for us into the book of our Exodus, into the book of our people in Africa trying to find what it means to be people. She's one of those that know what it meant to craft words, words so potent that it could unlock the doors of prison. She's one of those whose words and music continues to echo songs of freedom in our ears. But may I say also that it is an important time for us to think of what it means to be in Africa in this time. In a very own way, Tumam Dorothy said, don't lock me down to in one country or one place in this continent that I call my own. And she named herself as a child and a daughter of the whole continent. She named the north of Africa, the east of Africa, south of Africa, and every place she named it her very own. I pray that we would listen to those words again and again and hear in the whispers beneath the music something that says to us, rise up daughters and sons of Africa and claim your place in the world again. I hope and pray for that because we are made of those dreams, of those that sat in the heart of the 50s to dream for us. Who titles the song and says, DF Malan, and hopes they would wake up alive? But she's one of those that said, even if whatever the case, I am not going to just probably create music for music's sake. Because music for music's sake makes us poorer as society. But when we sing, we not only just sing the things we like or we would like to hear, but we sing the stories and the dreams of our streets and every corner of our continent, and we sing them into reality, and we bring them back to life because there are times when the oppressor, the pharaoh, wants to diminish them. And so for the pharaohs of the time, the TF Malans of the time, it was a very strange dream for a Zimbabwe-born girl to begin in her 20s to start naming such a consciousness that's deeper than just words. The connective consciousness that says, even if I'm born in this specific locality, I hear the, the, the winds that are blowing up in the Congo. I hear the winds that are blowing across the continent. And then she says, what happened to Patrice Mulumumba? And as she names that, she then says, as I sing, I don't want just to sing for singing's sake. I want to ask the questions to those that have power to destroy us. I want to ask them, where is he who killed him? It is a time for us to reimagine again what it means to sing in the context of the new struggles of our country. It is a time for us to reimagine what it means to be children of God. So let me go to the text and draw a few lines. You see, the text starts and tells a brief story in one sentence. But let me introduce to you Miriam, that girl, Miriam, that lady Miriam in the scriptures. I wouldn't have read a story about a man when I celebrate such a great woman. So Miriam is the one that his, whose identity is obscure in Exodus 2. In Exodus 2, she's that very woman who is the midwife in the context of Pharaoh's tyranny. She's one of the two women that when the state sanctioned certain things, they engaged in civil disobedience. 
She's the one that said, we're not going to kill the Hebrew boys. We're going to face the fear of the emperor. We're going to probably lose our lives. But we want to be custodians of a bigger dream than the selfish dreams of a passing empire. And then they decided, women, is it? Do you realize that it's women? It is women in 1958 that did the same, the same thing in this country. It is women on whose this, this country stands, the dreams of women that are able to march and galvanize and speak truth to power. She is one of those amongst us. One of those that says to us, I want to go into the wilderness with the people of God and when they banish them out of this country, she then decides, well, no, I'm not, I don't have a home here. I will keep singing even across the shore and sing songs of freedom. And she gets to those places and discovers that our mothers and fathers are already there. And they gather in the midst of the night when they do all sorts of things to try and reimagine how freedom can come around. She comes and says, when you feel tired of struggling, when you feel tired of drafting another petition, when you feel tired of writing another letter to the UN, let's come in the evening, let's come together as the people of the land of Africa, let's come and sing our sorrows and sing our dreams. Let's sing our pain, let's sing our hope, let's sing all the things that make us, let's sing them up until hope catches up with our hearts. Let's do it. She's one of those that is able to help us sing the melodies that, that take us out of the cynicism and the pain of yesterday and draw us into a different future. She's one of those. One of those. She's one of those that says to us, we stand in a precipice. We stand between the waters of destruction and the hand of God and Pharaoh's army and freedom. She's the one that dares to stand in that sea as she is wet out of the pains of her own struggle, as she is wet out of the pains and the cries of her own child, children. She doesn't see that my life was just to protect an individual dream. Because we live in a time and a culture where people think if my life is secure, if my dream has come true, I don't care about the dreams of others. We live in a culture of, 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 of very pervasive individualism that seems to swallow the dreams of our country. If you combine individualism with greed, you become a priest. If you combine personal ambition with the love of money, you lose your heart. If you combine the things that are tangible and lose sight of the bigger dreams of freedom and, and social cohesion of a community birthed out of a struggle, if you lose the dream, no matter who you are, you've lost it. People lose dreams in this country. There's people we've seen who started out so well and because they arrived at the place that said to them, you have some power now, they lose the heart that they had yesterday. And, and we settle, and we settle for, for ex, an expedient politic, a politic that only covers my bases. In the checkered rooms where power gets concocted beyond the public spectacle, we settle for those things. Mom Dorothy stands as one of those that says to us in this generation, we have bigger dreams. And the dreams are up until the child from the lost 
township and rural corner of this land has access to education, you can't stop. She is the one that says to us, up until those families that were destroyed by the, the apartheid government, up until those families find a sense of cohesion, why are there so many divorces in our community? It's because we lost that identity back in the trenches and we don't know how to reconfigure ourselves into the future. We are a people crafted out of a dream for freedom, for social cohesion, for beauty, for greatness. We lose that. We lose it at the expense of the waters that drowned Amis Pharaoh's Far Am war to drown us too. We stand in a precipice, but then we have a soldier. We have this one, this matriarch, this, this composer, this musician, this mother, this aunt, this great-grandmother, this one who has no boundaries in the existence, this one who says to us, even if I'm wet from the pains of the world, I'll stand on the shore of that sea and start picking up my tambourine and start that and then play out my tambourine, stretch it out and start singing again because we are a people to sing songs that bring us to a new generation that is better than yesterday. We, we, we have the task to sing ourselves in ways that transcend all the things that we have lost. We have an ability to sing into the future. I spoke recently to one of the parliamentarians in South Korea, and, she said some, and he said something beautiful. He said something to this effect. He said, 65 years, we had the choice of licking our wounds for the next 30 years. Or we had the choice to galvanize all the hope that was left after the ravages of war. Galvanize every piece of that hope and then stand up, rise up, and become a people for the better world. And I think that's the prophetic imagination that Umam Dorothy had. That's the kind of revolutionary mentality that Umam Dorothy had. She had the capacity to galvanize people. Did I tell you that Miriam is the first one to be named a prophet in scripture? It is not a man. In a time and a, a place in this country where the bodies of women are still a contested avenue, she, Miriam, 2,000 years ago, was already proclaiming the gift of what it means to stand in the public space and be a leader and be a prophet and order the people of God and challenge the status quo. That Miriam, this Dorothy are the same person. We need women that will, will rise beyond, will move beyond the kitchen in this land. We need a society and a leadership that honors that. We need both the public space and a church like me that needs to realize what it means to emancipate our sisters and our mothers. We are the people to give birth to new songs. And my prayer is that, Mom Dorothy, as you lie there, may you, you left us quite early. We were wondering what next song will you compose. We were wondering what song will you compose now. Because this country needs songs. Songs now. That will tell us about the lies that we live. We need songs that will tell us about how we have failed to honor even our very selves. We need songs that will tell us what it means to live in a lesser way than we have been purposed to. We need songs that will, will, will disentangle the pains of the past and set us free for the future. We need songs. Mom Dorothy, would you compose us another song? Another song. One more song that will show us how freedom looks like. How freedom looks like for the one that has waited for 25 years. How does it look like? Tell us once more. Once more, please tell us. Once more. Because you were able to do it in the 50s. 
60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, yes. when we found our freedom, but we need it even now. Sing us another song. Raise your tambourine and sing again. Help us to walk into a greater place, into a better humanity, into a better way that we can be a society together. Daughter of Africa, pan Africanist of note, you lie here with dreams unfulfilled. May your soul nourish our souls with food for tomorrow. Amen. Thank you for all with which you have blessed us, even to this day. For the gift of joy in days of health and strength, and for the gifts of your abiding presence and promise in days of pain and grief. We praise you for home and friends, and for our baptism and peace in the church. With all who have faithfully lived and died, above all else, we thank you for Jesus, who knew our griefs, who died our death, and rose for our sake, and who lives and prays for us. Lord, we thank you for the life of Dorothy, for all we have learned from her and all that has been given to us through her. We thank you that Dorothy is now free of trees in pain and secure in being loved, knowing that nothing can separate us from your love in Jesus Christ. We are free to commit Dorothy to you, show that she is safe with you. We pray for ourselves. At this time, we recognize that Dorothy's death reawakens other griefs, and we ask that you will help us deal with these strong feelings. Give us the unshakable knowledge that there is nothing that can separate us from your love. We thank you for the bonds that hold us together and support us even while we feel the pain of separation. Help us to keep on supporting each other. Help us to keep on supporting each other. Give us your wisdom to grieve well. Give us the hope that death is not the end. Give us the courage to face the changes that Dorothy's death brings. In the name of Jesus Christ, who overcame death and opened our future with you, we pray. Lord God, as we are constrained to pray for others, we pray for humble servants to demonstrate grace and sacrifice. Whatever self-interest and expediency bring destruction and suffering on our world. Amen. We thank you, God of love and justice, that you are forever and working with us and among us in our hearts and our world to create wholeness and freedom, compassion and connection, equity and reconciliation. And so together we pray for your love and justice to fill our world as the waters cover the sea. We pray for bold prophets to speak your truth, whatever our fears and uncertainties drown out our wisdom and your wisdom. Amen. We pray for courageous women and to show the way whenever the complexities and confrontations of our world leave us confused and overwhelmed. Amen. Amen. We pray for wise teachers to open our eyes, minds, and hearts whenever new challenges and opportunities require us to find new solutions and resources. Amen. We pray for humble servants to demonstrate grace and sacrifice wherever self-interest and expediency bring destruction and suffering on our world.
standing, come, let us pray. Bring us, O Lord God, at our last awakening into the house and gate of heaven, to enter into that gate and dwell in that house where there shall be no darkness, no dazzling, but one in our light. No noise, no silence, but one equal music. No fears, no hopes, but one equal possession. No ends, no beginnings, but one equal eternity. In the habitation of thy glory and dominion, world without end. Amen. with taking the body now back to the Hess and I'm going to request that we follow then this procession as we go out that it will first be Abifundi Sina Pamili and then Abashumayeli and then Umzimba then followed by the family and immediately after the family I will ask, ask that the former president of the republic um, follows um, together with the family, together with the ambassador, you no know, minister or tetra, together with the MPC, Kunye, no Baba Umoyo. And if I could ask then that the musicians then follow immediately after that, and then the rest of the congregation may then follow. And I ask that up until the musicians have left the church, nobody leaves the church. And we shall then respect that. I now ask the Panya to lead and also uh, join us outside as they will continue to sing as we then lead the body. Sorry, just only some few announcements. Um, one is that actually when we leave from here, we are going uh, to the West Park uh, Cemetery. Uh, we are going to go, all of us, straight to the West Park Cemetery, and then after that we go home. And we are also being invited, uh, most of you, and uh, you met the preacher, so come you all to the Bethesda Mission for the next episode <laughs> of this sermon. And we speak the truth.